Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we have the great honor of spending some time with some great folks at the 187th Fighter Wing. On my left is Colonel Brian Vaughn, and on my right is Staff Sergeant Neil Palmer. Now this is an amazing base filled with lots of planes, but also there's a lot of things that feed around it, isn't there? There's a lot. There's uh, several hundred people work each and every day to make sure each and every sort of gets up. Incredible. Now this is your playground right, right now, is that correct? Yeah, yes sir, yeah. This is the fly line, and uh, this is where all the moving parts uh, come together to make these jets fly. Awesome. Now earlier, I got the great honor of flying with uh, Colonel Vaughn uh, in this F-16D right over here. It was an amazing experience. Please be sure to subscribe and check out that video. But there's so many moving parts beyond just the pilot, beyond just the plane, and so many amazing people here. We want to kind of do a quick walk around and share some of that with you. Let's check it out. Uh, now, Sergeant, you are part of the Air National Guard. You are the uh, crew chief? Yep, F-16 crew chief. Yep. Wonderful. What does that job entail? Uh, well, the crew chief is the caregiver of the jet. From uh, nose to tail, it's kind of our airplane. So it's anything from oil servicing to hydraulic servicing to tire changes, brake changes, uh, tests and inspections uh, when the jet lands and, and when we per se put it to bed at night. So when it's done for the day, we make sure all the inspections are ready for the next day. Wow. And it just helps keep the mission rolling. So you're in charge of the plane to make sure it's always at the ready? Yep, always at the ready. So if the, when the pilot steps to it, he or she has no worries of is this jet capable of flying today? It's ready to go. We will make sure the jet's as safe as it can be for their for their safe return. Incredible. I heard uh, that we borrow airplanes, or they borrow mm -hmm. airplanes. They're yeah. really your plane. And as the crew chief, that's our airplane. And the pilot will borrow it for us for that sortie, whether it's an hour or two hours, three hours long. Wow. And uh, when he or she lands, and, and shuts down, we'll, we'll turn it and ready, make sure it's ready to go for the next flight. Uh, a lot of people probably think, you know, crew chief, oh, I can't work on a, on a jet. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not for me. There's actually quite a demand for that. Right, it's yeah. It's quite an awesome job, isn't it? It is an awesome job, and I do not have a technical background. So it doesn't matter what background you're from or what, what kind of confidence level you may have in yourself, you can, you can do it, and there's always a need for, for more people. So Colonel Vaughn, you said earlier that these positions are actually in very high demand. So uh, while we have enough today, Tomorrow, we're gonna to be short unless we get some help. It doesn't matter if you have someone in the airplane. If it's not flying, it's not flying. So what do some of those different support roles look like? So there's roughly um, 100 people over here, young, great airmen, that are responsible for loading and downloading uh, live munition. Okay. They work with the bomb dump or ammo that's on the other side of base who actually physically build the bombs. They'll take different components, different bombs, they'll build them up, they'll deliver them to these uh, great airmen, and then they will take them out and load them on the airplanes. So the bombs are assembled or built here? The bombs are assembled and built here. Yep. And so even when we go deploy, we'll uh, deploy with our ammo troops who are constantly building bombs the entire time. And uh, the more we use, the more they, yeah. they build. So. I guess it makes sense. You don't want these like arriving by FedEx or something. To exactly. Clean, right? Yeah. We have a whole another section of maintainers who may never work on an airplane, but they're working on the equipment to support the airplane. And so we have people who work on the hydraulic systems. We have people who specialize in the fuel systems. We have people who work on the avionics of the systems. And what's great about that is these are technical and mechanical career fields that are in high demand yeah. in the civilian world. And uh, they'll learn it from the Air Force, they'll get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of training, and they'll take it out to the civilian world. Can't get that in college. Nope. So these are 2,000 pound JDAMs, or GPS guided bombs, right okay. here. There are two different types here. Yeah. This is a like traditional JDAM, in which uh, 2,000 pounds of ordnance. I mean, that is a big, big bomb right wow. there. And we'll, we'll carry two of these. Uh, this one right here, is the penetrator version. So this is the bunker buster that okay. you hear about on, on the news. This is the one that will actually, if there's an under, underground bunker, that it will actually penetrate in through the ground and go take out the bunker underground. And then blow up. And then blow up. Yeah, and these are both guided by GPS. Does that have a special tip that... that it does, through? yeah. Right. As you can see, there's a little bit different design in them. And these are the same 2,000 pound bombs that were used in Vietnam. Really? We just put different tail kits on the back of them. That guided so the, to the target? That guided to the target. So it's the same bomb we've, we've used for 40, 50 years now, the body, but mm -hmm. we've added a different tail kit and some little bit of fins on the front around it and uh, we made it a smart bomb. Yeah. Took a, kind of a dumb bomb to make it smart. So do you have the center mounted underneath or you don't have these out on you, the wing? You have these out on the wing. So this is, we would carry one of each of these uh, on each wing. So 2,000 on this side, 2,000 on this side, you drop yep. one off here, what happens? 
there's a wing that's awful heavy, it will do that. So you, have, you know when it comes off. And that's why the trim's there, right? And that's why the trim is there, yep. <laughs> so this is NDI. They come in here and they'll take uh, oil samples out of the jet every night. And they will actually put it on a microscope, put it on some motor test equipment, and determine if the motor is wearing on itself. So a lot of times they will see a problem before we ever see the symptom in the airplane. Okay. And they'll take care of it earlier. This is an actual F-16 motor right here. It's out of the airplane. Oh, wow. And if you'll see, the different stages of the motor are all strung out right here. You see, they're actually re rebuilding a motor right now. Uh, from the nozzle section back there where the afterburner is, different fan sections. They will go in here and they will inspect at the uh, microscopic level everything about this motor. And they'll rebuild it. So if uh, we see some work that needs to be done through the NDI process, or we have a, a crew chief like Nate. Nate, here's that motor. It's not doing right. After every sortie we land, he'll get up in the yeah. intake and actually look at the blades of every oh, wow. of the motor. Yeah. If he hears something wrong, if something just doesn't sound right, he'll get the engine shop out there who's a specialist. They may say, yep, we have a blade going bad. So like Colonel said, we, we, we jump into the intake and look at, there's 32 blades on the first on the first section. And so we'll look at those for any nicks, dings that aren't already marked or any kind of weird ticking or if a blade's loose or something funky and then we'll notify engine shop of the issue and we'll also jump the exhaust and we'll look at all the uh, fuel nozzles, any cracks or the uh, what we call turkey feathers which is the outside of the exhaust and the augmenter where it closes and open and if there's any kind of discrepancy then we'll notify the person that needs to fix that but we, but we would find that discrepancy so it shows the, the team aspect of of crew chiefs and engine shop working together despite being in different locations. And there's a great story of a crew chief uh, that's been out here about 20 years and uh, she jumped up in the intake. Everything looked good, but it just didn't sound right to her. Something was off. And she was adamant, she said, this motor is not good. And when they pulled the motor, one of the stages uh, was completely bad. It, basically a bearing was starting to go. And uh, there's high potential that uh, the next time that airplane flew, that motor would have failed. And just because of her recognition of the sound, knowing something wasn't right, she's probably potentially saved the human life. Incredible. Incredible. I, look, I can't believe it's the size of this. I mean, the yeah. F-16 is huge. Yep. But where do you put the fuel? The fuel is basically, any, if there's any empty space in the airplane, it's that's full where, of gas. That's where it goes. So there's a point today when we went straight up with that, uh, with the F-16. He did a slow arc coming back and it felt exactly like 1G. Just, just it was 1G. Like yeah. I was sitting, sitting in the chair, but the only thing is the whole world was upside down, not for a half a second or two seconds, but for like eight seconds. And I was totally comfortable, but then my mind's like, wait a minute, the blue's on the wrong side <laughs> in the clouds. It literally is like we're flying over the ocean. 30,000 pounds of thrust. 30,000 pounds of thrust. Yeah. So as you saw today when we were going straight up, yeah, we were going straight up and we were really high and it wasn't really slowing down. No. Yeah, so it was, uh, if we didn't have the wing tanks on there, uh, we would have been in a one-to-one, -one, which would means we could have literally stood up, stood on its tail and accelerated going straight up. Incredible. Yeah. I, I know I say this a lot, but I am truly humbled about how many moving pieces go on here, but also the, the fact how well you guys work together, how you guys all know each other's roles and how you just mesh perfectly. It's incredible. Now, seeing your playground is pretty humbling because mm -hmm. I got to fly with this amazing gentleman, <laughs> but the only reason I got back safely was because of great people like you. Yep, and that, that's the big team aspect that we have here. It's a, it's one big moving piece and uh, we all work together to keep those jets flying and uh, to go down range and then do our job. Incredible, incredible. And oftentimes people think that they have to be the pilot. They have to be, you know, some key role that they see most of the time on the movies. Uh, truth of the matter is, is there are so many rewarding careers within the military, especially the Air National Guard, where you can walk into it and you're not only ending up with an amazing skill, but also the ability to be a weekend warrior, the ability to go home to your family, and when needed, to serve your state and serve your country. So guys, thank you so much for the tour. Uh, this has definitely been eye-opening for me. And friends, if you guys want to see more content, make sure you check down the links below, and we'll see you next time. And on my right is Captain Nate Palmer, Staff Sergeant. <laughs> Close. Staff Close. Sergeant. We'll be soon. <laughs> yeah. Captain, can we just give him a promotion? <laughs> no, years, right? not yet. <laughs> All right. Today we have the great honor of spending some time with some really amazing <laughs> Today we're going to be talking to an awesome gentleman named Nate. Uh, I think it was that. Right? <laughs> Down the rabbit hole.